the Bohr model of the atom so far. Um, we first looked at the, the Rutherford model of the atom, the Rutherford model of the atom being, um, you know, he's got a gold <coughs> leaf, fires alpha particles at that gold leaf, they bounce back. Because they bounce back, that indicates that there must be something in the middle of the atom. He theorized that that was the nucleus and that most of the mass within an atom was, was, was inside the nucleus. Everything else around it was empty space. You know, if you squeeze the empty space out of, um, out of it, then you've got hardly any mass left at all. It can be said that uh, in the, the human body, if we squeeze all the, the empty space out of every human body in the world, then we could all fit into the volume of, of an apple or a sugar cube, something is said. So the Bohr model was set out to explain why there was so much empty space. So if all that empty space is there, why is it there? You know, why do the electrons need that empty space? So Niels Bohr came up with his Bohr model of the atom. And his Bohr model of the atom really said that the electrons uh, inhabit a certain energy level from the nucleus. And that can be represented in an energy level diagram. The, the top energy level here, if you give an electron enough energy, it will, it will be ejected and it will fly off, like in the photoelectric effect. And um, we start off here. Uh, this is what we call the ground state, so the, the, the floor or the, the level that is closest to the, to the nucleus is the ground state, and we would call that um, E0, and that can be drawn in an energy level diagram. So we went on to talk about what actually happens as we move through these different energy levels. Um, Electrons can move between these orbits, but they can't go like halfway between. They, they can only be on one level or the other. So if you give a certain amount of energy to an electron, if it's enough to move up one level, but not quite enough to move up to two, it will only go up one level. So it can't go anywhere in between. And on an energy level diagram, what you'll have is you'll have those energy levels drawn, uh, written down next to each individual line, so that you know how much energy is required to make each individual jump. Um, the electron at the lowest energy level is the ground state. So the ground state, which is usually written as E0. And any electron that moves up from its original state, we say that that's an, an excited state. So you can provide energy to an electron and you can excite that electron and cause it to move um, up an energy level. But what will happen is that will, it will ultimately return back down to its original level. So we've really got two different transitions that can happen. We've got um, upwards and downwards, and there are different physical processes involved in both of those. But the energy that is, is gained or lost is always going to be the same, because that's dictated by uh, the energy levels or the energy amounts required to move between these levels. So if we look at upwards, first of all, you need to provide an electron with a certain amount of energy. You do that via a photon. You provide uh, you know enough energy with that photon to cause the jump to, to up one energy level, then you can then calculate what the frequency of that photon would be required, because that's just E equals HF for the photon. And um, that just means that energy is directly proportional to frequency. So if you know how much energy is required to move between these levels, you can use that to calculate frequency. Because the, the energy required, delta E, the change in energy required to jump from one level to the next, just rearrangement of E equals HF allows you to calculate what frequency this photon must be. So this will have a certain associated energy and a certain associated frequency. So if you put enough energy, you can cause an electron to jump many, many different levels at the same time. How much energy you put into that electron determines how many energy levels you jump up. The more energy you put in, the more energy levels you jump up. But you've got to match the level of energy that corresponds to each of these individual energy levels because it's got to be exactly that amount. There are no in-betweens. You can't go halfway between two levels. The other transition is, is downwards, and that's what will happen ultimately when you put energy into an electron and it raises up a certain number of levels. It will go back downwards eventually. It will go back to its original level. And when it does that, it loses the energy that was given to it in the first place. And when it loses that energy, it gives out a photon of energy. And that photon of energy will have a certain, certain associated frequency with it. Again, that's, that's due to E equals HF. And that photon is pretty much the same as the photon that would have been put in to start with um, to, to cause it to go up a level. But it can, of course, come down several energy levels at a time, or it can come down in different stages. 
Um, you know, it's totally random the process that is involved in that. So sometimes it might go straight back down to its level, or sometimes it might take two or three different jumps. But every time it does that, it's losing energy, so it's going to give out a photon. And that photon is equivalent to a certain frequency, um, and that frequency is equivalent to the energy level um, associated with it from E equals HF. So we started off just by looking at this through a, a mythical element, and we just really looked at the different energy transition levels that it can take. Note that we've always got negative values here because we start off at the ionization level, that's zero joules. And as it moves down, it's always losing energy. That's why you've got negative numbers. So anytime you've got an energy level diagram, it's going to look something like this. Each of these lines represents a level the electron can be at. And each of these numbers to the side there represents the energy that's required to get to that level or to move up from that level. You know, the difference between these two numbers, for example, is the energy that's required to make an electron move from here straight up to here. And when it gets to there, um, you know, it will move back down eventually. Eventually it's going to come back down to this level and it will emit a photon in the process. The photon of energy will be equivalent to this difference in energy. And that will be equivalent to a certain frequency. And that will tell you really what, you know, what the photon is, whether it's a photon of visible light or a photon of ultraviolet light or any other type of radiation. So we're always going to be at zero joules here. E0 is our ground state, the one closest to the nucleus, and you can move between those if you put energy in, but it's always going to go back to its original level and emit a photon in the process.